empowering the fan's voice. Brought to you by HealthSpan Elite, the official sports nutrition partner for the All Blacks. That looking forward, this is what we talked about. Do you see the building experience for the 2023, the highest priority for the All Blacks next year? 82% yes. They've already talked about it, JK. They've obviously got it in, in their mindset. We've talked about it on the show. 30-odd test matches he has to deal with in the next few years. How do they go about well, that? The hardest thing about being the All Black coach is that our public, us, mm. and the New Zealand Rugby Union demand trophies. We want to keep that high percentage of wins up there. So that does put Fozzie under pressure to get that balance right. However, I would say, if we look back on the loss to Argentina and to Australia, and we won the World Cup, would we care? No. As always, right? Between World Cups, Mills, the fact that's our path to success. Yeah, and that's the thing. Would, would we, after, after the fact, the, the fact of the matter is, you've seen how much scrutiny they're under when they sort of lost those two games, and that's the hardest part. Well, you, you talk about Ian Foster as well, JK, but he's also only got a two-year contract. So how do you balance up the fact that you've got to get results, but also look ahead to the Rugby World Cup, which... If you don't get results and you're chopping and changing teams to try and, and, and build that sort of um, that depth and you're not getting results, well, you might not be there. And I think, and, and when they got to the end of this season, they were trying to get results, particularly in the last game. And how they went about that was critical. And Tobias Matson has joined us through the course of the Tri Nations. He's been in the war room. And Timbai, we know for a fact the All Blacks have had to make adjustments and changes through the course of their season. Yeah. But there's a critical part of the game that defines the performances of all the teams in this competition. Yeah, I think so. And one of the things we've done throughout the war room segments is talk about the big five. Yep. But what I wanted us to do was to, to zone in on one part of the field because I feel like when we talk about this part of the field, it gives us a couple of things. It gives us an insight into parts of... Uh, the game, but also the trends of the game. So we're going to talk about the rock zone. Uh, it's, the, it's the part of the field from the 22 up to halfway. And for me, this management in your own half gives you a real insight into your success. And so many options, you're talking the run or kick zone. Yeah. I mean, so many options teams have in terms of how they approach the game. Territory, keeping the ball in hand, all of the things you have to take into account if you're going to stress the opposition. Yes, I'm, I'm going to work from a reverse order. order. So what, one thing you'll see is in this part of the field, there's lots of variation. You've got the back three further back, so there's more space. They've got to protect the, uh, the, the, the kicking space. So you'll see lots of different ways of playing the game here, and I think that's really important for the game. The second point here is it's the points of difference. So you'll see teams going to their traditional strengths yep. um, to get yep. results in this part of the field, and also their points of difference, whether they think this is the way to win the game. So it gives us a, a bit of an insight into where the game is heading. And this is a critical one for me, though, the yeah. referees. And yeah. what do you mean by the referees? How do you take that into account when you are planning how you play in parts of the field? Yeah, so one of the things, when you look at the data over a number of years, it, it shows patterns. And the patterns then gives you meaning into the data. So one of the things when I look at the data is, um, and I'm just going to highlight here, so actually, for the, for, the, for the punters back home, especially the ones that play in the front row, <laughs> when, you look at, when you look at this... When you see a negative number, so we, we've been talking about efficiencies, when you see a negative 2%, what does that mean? Well, it means that when you're attacking, you, when you've got the ball in this part of the field, you actually lose points. Now, you've got to really listen here. So this is 27 until now. Right. What you'll see is teams are losing points by playing in that part of the field. So for me, this is a real insight to the referees. Is it becoming a part of the field where it's not worth playing? Yep. And if it is, what does that do to the way the game's played in 21-22 leading to the World Cup? That's a really important part. You'll see here the All Blacks in 17-18, they were positive. It was actually worth playing the ball. It was actually worth trying to score points from your own half. You'll see now majority of the teams are below zero in this part of the field. And you think about performances in the teams that have made massive improvements, South Africa, World Cup champions, yep. Argentina going and playing forward and all of a sudden controlling where they play the game and the decisions they make. South Africa, we know, what do they go to? They go to their set piece, their big boppers. What are they looking for here? They're looking to uh, open up an opportunity, a penalty, yes. kick for territory, play in the right part of the field. They play to their strengths. They're really pragmatic here. So if they get a penalty advantage, they must play. Otherwise, they're mauling for a penalty or kicking.
When you look about the All Blacks, though, they turn that part of the field yeah. into an attack, opportunity. An attacking opportunity. If you turn over the ball here, you'll know the All Blacks will... You'll see the continuity play, you'll see people get excited, move into space, and often will score from here from turnovers. And that's that negative trend you're talking mm. about for Australia. But in saying that, Australia one of the best at launching counter-attacks. Yeah, from, as of carrying the ball back from, from kicks, Australia do really well. And then Argentina, a variety in their game. We've seen them kick a lot, but not afraid to use their platform, the scrum. From a scrum. And I think that's the great thing about this part of the field. You'll often see teams use their points of difference, but what we're seeing in the... Uh, you see the, the points of difference. So for us, we've got a lot of variation here. That's why we've led the game in our own half play. OK? And then traditionally, uh, the Argentinians around the scrum, surprisingly, the Wallabies on the counter-attack. You look at the, the people they've had in the backfield and um, the South Africans. Now, it's really interesting. In 2019, in that part of the field... South Africa kicked the ball 90% of the time. Now, 90% of the so time. So, 91. And, so, and we see it a lot, right? This box kick fest, yep. right? Where all of a sudden, teams get to this point where they don't feel as though they can play. Do you think the All Blacks are that team who are, at the moment, just not 100% sure how they work their way out of their own half? Well, it was interesting getting Fozzie's insight, and it's great the refl reflection they've had. They've had this mini World Cup to look at, and they're, it sounds like they're, they're really clear about where the game's going to go. But one thing I will say is, uh, last year, or even over the last three years, we've probably kicked 70% of the time in the rock zone. This year, we've moved up to 80% of the time. So, you know, we're going to talk about the referees and how do we make the game easy to referee? We're going to go straight there, because the, well, that's where you bring in JK. It's the first bring, person we bring in for that, yeah. is the fact you run us through, JK, exactly how you look at the game, you look at the laws and referees, how do you make those changes and adjustments? Well, I think we're worried too much about the law instead of actually making some decisions on, for example, that rock zone. Mm -hmm. If you create a couple of things like you're not allowed to kick it out or you've got to keep it within the field, then our game is going to be broken up, because as you no tabs. If we go to structure, defence is too hard. So for me, it's actually about some of those invisible things that we can apply to our game that will completely change it. Rugby league do it really well, you know, the 40-20 the, the kick, for example. So in the rock zone you just spoke about, let's say, well, you're not allowed to kick it, so just run. So, I mean, runs even. adjustments. <laughs> we, Mills, you look at the game and the way the games are being structured and, you know, the, the nature of the contest right now, do you look inside the laws or does it go back to the fact that we saw changes the referees were looking at earlier in the season... Can they continue that now? But the thing is, you're also looking at the evolution of the game and how the game's actually changing. And, and, but when you, when you look at the referee, what sort of mindset are they taking? So if you're in the rock zone, are they actually ta looking at it from a, in a positive way from a defensive point of view or an attacking point of view? And, and I guess that's probably where it's changed. Defence... Um, in terms of the backfield, it's, it's obviously changed. And that's probably implemented also the fact that the, your skill set from running it from set piece in, those, in that rock area has also changed as well. So the athlete has changed, but I suppose going back to your point about the referees, what mindset do they have when you're actually trying to play something out of your own half? Is it a defensive or is it an, an attacking sort of um, mindset from, a, from whoever's got the ball? Teams getting rewarded enough for playing? Tabs, when you think about the contest and you think about what's, what we're seeing across the globe right now? Well, the data says no, and I think that's the, that's the concern. I'm not sure what the solution JK is. JK says no as well. <laughs> JK always says no data. No. 